Hi guys, the case that I am presenting to you today is the fictional study of May H. The background goes that she is a 10 year old female who was brought into the clinic by her mother Visna. Visna said that May passed a six inch worm in her stool roughly five days ago that she brought into the lab for identification. The worm was found to be Ascaris lumbricoides or a common roundworm. May's vitals were temperature of 36.2, her heart rate was 82, her blood pressure was 104 over 64, and her respirations were 18. She had no abdominal pain or bloating, no jaundice, no shortness of breath, and she's been eating, sleeping, and going to the bathroom regularly. May takes a children's multivitamin and has no medication allergies. May is in fifth grade and is currently on a soccer team and participates in competitive gymnastics. She did spend four weeks this summer with her mother in Cambodia visiting her mother's parents and other relatives. She appears to be in no acute distress but is very embarrassed and rightly does not want any of her friends to know that she pooped out a worm and her mother appears very supportive but a little weirded out about the whole worm thing. So before we can treat this little girl, we need to know more about the organism. Ascaris is one of the most common intestinal worm infections in the world, but it is fairly uncommon in the United States. That being said, it does still happen. Poor sanitation and using human waste as fertilizer is usually the cause. An estimated 1.4 billion people worldwide are infected and most are asymptomatic and the majority of these are actually kids between 2 and 10 years old because it's an oral fecal route. The condition is usually diagnosed by a stool sample and in some areas this worm is the primary cause of emergent abdominal surgeries and there is a reason for this. So this is a very quick overview of the life cycle of Ascaris. The eggs are ingested, whether they are on unwashed fruits and vegetables or on dirty hands. They hatch in the small intestine and then the larvae actually penetrate the intestinal walls. They migrate to the liver and the lungs through the lymphatic system and the bloodstream and they mature in the alveoli, crawl up the bronchus and are swallowed. The larvae then mature and lay eggs, which are shed in the stool. But the worms themselves mature and live in the intestines, although they can still migrate up and throughout the GI tract. So this is some more information about this roundworm, and also you can see why it's such a big problem. In the right conditions, an egg can survive for 10 years and even the chemical purification drops that people use for water will not prevent them from hatching. So always boil your water if you're out in the wild or if there's any question. After 9 to 11 weeks the female worm starts laying eggs and she can lay up to 200,000 a day. Each worm lives for up to 24 months and they can grow up to 35 centimeters long. Now the number of worms that are in the bowel actually depends on how much of or the number of eggs that are ingested. So just because the worm can lay 200,000 eggs a day does not mean that you will have those in your bowel. Those are shed out in the stool. But it's not uncommon to have several hundred at one time and there have been documented cases of some kids having more than 2,000 at once in their bowel. Treatment is very effective but unfortunately does not prevent reinfection. Patients can be asymptomatic and not know that they have the worms and thus shed eggs for many years. Ascaris can also live anywhere throughout the GI tract but the larvae can cause problems in the lungs and be found in the kidneys and even the brain. There's also transmission between mother and child. Complications of this particular organism includes bowel obstruction and perforation, pancreatitis, malnutrition, issues with the liver, and gangrene. 
So this is a great video that you are going to want to skip if you're eating dinner or if you plan on having any sort of noodles in the next couple of days. It shows the magnitude of what these worms can do to a bowel and it is a surgical video so just be warned it is very informative and if you like this kind of stuff like I kind of do then you'll think it's great. So treatment for Ascaris is almost 100% successful. It's a one-time dose of oral albendazole, and it's 400 milligrams, and that dose is for both adult and pediatric cases. There is another recommended medication that is not currently available in the United States, so I did not include that here in this discussion. The goal of the therapy is very simple as well. It's eradication of the worms and also patient education to prevent reinfection. Drug interactions that all decrease serum concentrations are listed below, and these should be avoided for the day or so that you have to take this medication. These are the pharmacokinetics of albendazole. It is widely distributed throughout the body, including the spinal fluid. It's metabolized by the liver with extensive first pass effect. The half-life is 8 to 12 hours, and its peak is between 2 and 5 hours. It is excreted in the urine and stool, and it is absorbed from the GI tract, but the absorption is actually poor. It is five times better if the medication is taken with a fatty meal, and they gave the example of even ice cream or peanuts. So as far as the pharmacodynamics go, this is how the medication affects the worm. This drug is in the anthelmintic class, and it causes selective degeneration of the microtubules of intestinal and tegmental cells of the worms and their larvae. Glycogen is depleted, glucose uptake is impaired, and cholinesterase secretion is impaired as well. ATP production decreases, the worm's energy is depleted, and then it becomes immobile and dies. The list of adverse reactions to albendazole is below. Really the most significant and commonly reported were headache, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, GI upset type symptoms. It was possible to have increased liver enzymes, increased cranial pressure, alopecia, fever, and then the much more rare but severe cases are listed on the other side. Again, it is a one-time dose of this medication, so at least it does clear the body quickly and most side effects are gone very quickly as well. What we really want May and her mother to take away from this experience educationally is that albendazole is most effectively absorbed when it's taken with a fatty meal. May should avoid grapefruit juice for the day that she does take this medication because it decreases the serum concentration of the drug. Treatment is just the one-time dose, so call with any adverse effects, but there would be nothing to discontinue if she did have any. Reinfestation is very possible, so she needs to wash her hands frequently and wash all fruits and vegetables before she eats them. And all untreated water should be boiled before drinking, especially when you're out of the country. So this brings us to the end of our case study. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did and learned something new about roundworms.